Hey, Facebook, Steve Wood here, Online Mastery, and this is Season 1, Episode 10 of Midday Mastery, and today I'm going to be talking about marketing and how to generate traffic. And the reason I'm doing this is because I've had some people reach out asking how best to market themselves. I've had a lot of people who are asking about SEO, and specifically they're asking about SEO as a startup. Now, I think there's a challenge with this, personally. I think that it's wrong to focus your attention on SEO as a startup. And so I just wanted to go through some concepts, some marketing advice for myself that might be able to help you and some ways that you can look to generate traffic. And so I just want to kind of pre-frame this and say that before you even consider generating traffic, there is something worse than having no traffic in your business, and that is having the wrong traffic. Having no customers is not as bad as having the wrong customers because if you've got no customers, then you just means you have no money and you can generate more customers and more money. But if you have the wrong customers in your business, it's going to cost you a lot more. You can end up losing your business, losing your mind, losing your reputation. You can lose so much more by having the wrong kind of uh, person in your business. So I really want you to consider when you're doing any marketing, anything at all, that the starting point for any marketing has to be who you want to attract. Who do you want to work with? It goes back to the customer avatar. I keep talking about this. You need to know who is your customer avatar, who you want to work with, who is your ideal customer, who is your ideal client, and how can you market a message to them. So once you understand that and you've got that, then you need to understand how to market to them. And so many people, like there's two things that I work at. That's generating traffic and converting traffic. So you need to generate traffic into your business, then you need to convert that traffic into sales. And so when we're looking at the generation of the traffic and we're looking at how we can generate people into our business, there's different ways to do it. You don't have to be online. Just because I focus on online business doesn't mean that I have to generate all of my traffic online. You can think outside the box. And I was reading a story about this yesterday, and I thought it was fascinating, and it made me, uh, it made me laugh. It was a story about Tinder. If all of you know the app Tinder, like the dating app, um, how they started is actually a fantastic story about how they scaled their business. Because Tinder, when it actually started, they used a really aggressive but a kind of unorthodox marketing pro uh, process. For example, they were going around to universities and they were having, uh, there, there was a, a, a lady or a girl that was having a birthday party and they said that if they paid for the birthday party and made it larger, bought more people, um, could they make it a Tinder party? And like this girl said yes and that would be a great idea. So what they did is they had a bus that was going to and from bringing people to this party and they said that anybody that come to the party, they wasn't allowed in unless they downloaded the app. So rather than having a ticket to get into this party, they were making people download the app. Now what happened is that these parties were happening at different universities and they were doing this. What would happen is that they found their user base grew to, I think it was something like 20,000 people just through this marketing technique alone. And that's not really where the magic happened. What happened was on spring break when everybody went home and they started talking about this app and sharing it with people, they noticed that user, the user base, I think it was in the case of like the beginning of January to the end of January, the user base went from something like 20,000 to half a million. Like that's the power of the virality. Once you've got a good product and service and you're confident that you can deliver it, when you get it in front of the right people and they start talking about it, most of your marketing will be done through word of mouth. Most of your work marketing will be done by people referring business to you because they've had a good experience. Which is why you need to focus on the customer journey. Because when you give people a good customer experience, they will in turn recommend you. And that's cheaper than you paying for any ads. So then what you need to consider is the different types of marketing you can do. I use that as an example with Tinder, but when you look at offline and online marketing, all right, and there's different things you can do, and I'd love it if you could just type in the comments, give me some concepts and some ideas that you can think of for offline marketing. Like, for example, you could go around to local shops, and you could put um, a box in a shop. You could ask them if you could put a box there collecting business cards, where, like, let's say, for example, you could go into a, let's just say a hairdresser's. Let's say that you, um, your products are beauty products. So you could go into, like, a salon. You could put a thing saying, put in your, uh, put a box, put your name and your email address. So you can leave a little slip there, so fill in your name and email address and phone number, put it in a box, and you could win a hamper of beauty products. That's a way of list generation. That's a way to get people's contact information so you can reach out to them. And that's a way of doing it offline. All right, you can do like direct mail. You can sort of go door-to-door -door canvassing. There's like lots of different things you can do. I've already used a Tinder app as an example where people have to download the app at a party before they can get in. So look up things that you can do and ways that you can, um, you can get people. Almost, I'm not saying you need to force them to do it, but give them an option where they can't do something without getting something and so 
in, in order to get the contact details of people, there's a lot of offline things that you can do. So many people are focused online. I must do Facebook ads. I must do Google ads. I must, like, when you start, you're initially starting with your marketing, the very, very first thing you need to do is get proof of concept. You need a minimum viable product. You need something that you can get out there that you can test to make sure it works. For that, you need a small user base. You need to test that to make sure it works before you roll it out. Then what you want to do is you want to start looking at some small campaigns, some things you can do in your local area, things you can do around where your target audience will be. And so then when we switch onto online marketing, there's like really, realistically, there's kind of five areas, five areas that I focus on for online marketing. Okay, SEO is the one that's commonly talked about. Everyone says about SEO. SEO is a long-term marketing strategy. To get ranked in Google, you need to first understand keyword research, and that in itself is a massive task. Once you understand keyword research, you then need to do a competition analysis. So you need to understand your keywords. You then, I, for example, what I mean by that is what are people typing into Google to find you? You need to understand that. You need to know what those words are. That's why you need to know your audience, so you know what they're searching for. Once you've got that, you then need to look at competition because you need to do more for your business than your competition is doing for their business. But in order to rank above somebody, you need to have a better SEO. So you need to have a faster performing website. You need to have a secure website. You need to have better content. You need to make sure that all of the things that you have within your website is better than your competitors who are trying to rank for the same keywords. So it's really important that you do that. So when you look at SEO, there's actually a lot more involved rather than just having SEO. Like SEO is a small part of it, but in terms of like a, a marketing campaign, it's long term. All right, you need to prepare for this, you need to do a lot of things, and you're not going to get ranked overnight. You also, something else that people don't consider is when you're doing SEO, you need to submit your website to Google. Don't expect Google to find you. You need to tell Google where you are. You need to submit a site map to Google so they can index and find your website. So once you've done that, that's great. And you can always use um, keyword research. You can always use like good practice for SEO. Structure your pages right. Do the um, write the content, uh, uh, the copy of your pages. Write that with SEO in mind. Like you should always use best practice, but you shouldn't focus on having Google and making sure that SEO and organic SEO is your only marketing channel. That is a mistake that a lot of people make. They think I'm going to build a website, so they have a website built with absolutely no focus and no plan on sales funnels or customer journeys. There's no um, there's no call to actions. There's no analytics, there's no monitoring, they just have a website. And then they start focusing on SEO and they get completely lost in this rabbit hole of trying to get their site to the top of Google. The only two things you should focus at the start of your business, the only two things you should focus on Google is your name and your business name. Because when people go to Google, they'll probably type in your name or they'll probably type in your company's name. So you want to make sure that you're dominating for those words at the very least. When you're doing SEO, that is really important. But that is all I would do. In the initial instances, that was all I would focus on. Another thing to consider, and this is a good one to look at, is social media marketing. Call it SMM. When you're looking at social media marketing, you can do this organically through your own channel. You can do this through, when you're looking at, when you're marketing yourself, the first thing you want to do is you want to do organic messages. You want to put it out to the people who you know so that you can test it to make sure it works before you then start paying for ads. You don't want to be paying for ads until you know something works. So social media marketing is a fantastic way for you to create pages, groups, to create environments, to create communities, and to be able to get your message out to those people, to be able to test it on your Facebook profile, very much like what I'm doing now with a Facebook Live. This is a way to get my message out there. And so social media marketing, that's a great way to do that. Then you can look at what's called PPC or pay-per-click. Now, pay-per-click is where you actually pay for your advertising. And paying for your advertising is probably going to be the best way that you will scale your business. Once you have done um, your organic messaging, once you've done your organic marketing and you've found out what works and you've got some ideas and you've seen some results and you've started small, once you've started testing very small paid advertising or pay-per-click advertising, then you can start to scale it. So you want to start spending about five pounds a day just testing one little thing to see if it works. Tweak the headline, tweak the copy, tweak the image, tweak the opt-in, check the conversion funnel, make sure it works. When you've got people that are opting in through your ad and going through the process and becoming customers and buying from you at the end, then you know that works. Then you can tweak it, then you can put more money into it, but you need to make sure it works first. Too many people are just throwing money into Facebook ads and 
Snapchat ads and or whatever, all of the other ad channels like StumbleUpon and, and, and other things like that, and they're not actually testing out the process. You need to make sure you're testing out the process. It's really important you do that. So you've got your SEO, you've got your social media marketing, you've got your pay-per-click. We've already mentioned organic, which is probably the best way to start is for your organic, and that's where a lot of people get caught. A lot of people will have a Facebook page and they'll start just regurgitating the same content over and over and over again to the same people. I've seen so many people do this. They're like, this is my thing, this is my thing, this is my thing, this is my thing. They'll say the same thing to the same people, same thing to the same people. Just relentless bombardment, hoping that somebody new will come in. You need to get out to a new audience. When you look at your marketing funnel, your marketing funnel at the top level should be quite broad. All right, you want to attract a lot of people in there. And you want to filter those people through a sieve to get them to this stage where you can start engaging with them. You can start converting them into subscribers, into potential clients, so that you can get them into people who are interested in your services, your products, what you offer, and then you can sell them into your core offer. And then you can nurture them into re returning customers. It's the sales pipeline. It's the customer journey. And the best way for you to do that is to start with the outcome. Reverse engineer the process. Start, what is the outcome? What do you want people to buy? What do you want people to do? If you're talking about marketing, right, you're going to put money into marketing. There has to be a return on your investment. All right, you're not paying for marketing. You're paying, you're investing in marketing. And that investment needs a return. So if you're paying £100 for Facebook ads, you want to make sure you're getting more than £100 in return through your lifetime customer spend. Okay, it's really important that you do that. So what you need to really understand when you're looking at the outcome is what, what, are you, what is your outcome financially for your marketing? What is the process? It's three steps. The outcome. What is the outcome? What is the process? How are you going to convert them? And then what is the ad? So you need the ad to take them into a process to convert them. All right, it's simple. That's what you need to do. So you can look at the different channels to do that. And then finally, the last thing for you to be able to market is to build a list. It's always been said that the best way to market and to build your, uh, to make money, like you look at people like Jeff Walker, who did the product launch formula. They talk about how they did a million pounds in one day and how they did a million dollars in an hour. You know, they, they did that through having a list, through nurturing and building a database and through putting an offer out to that list. When you send an email blast out, and this is what happens because I've seen this happen, I've done it for customers, I've done it for myself. When you put an email blast out to a warm list, to a list that is responsive, to a list that you have nurtured. When you put a, an email blast out to a list that you have nurtured, targeted, specific offer to specific people, they will convert. And you have an opportunity there to get your message in front of the right people. You don't need a big list to do this, you just need a quality list. Right? It's all about quality traffic. You, I would rather start by attracting lots of people filtering them out very early on through very simple processes like questionnaires, things that you can ask them to do, opt-ins, things like you can, you can test to find out if they're going to engage with you. Follow them up, put them through an engagement series, find out if they're going to interact with you and if they don't, let them go. If they do, continue. And when you filter that list down, they're the people that you can market to, they're going to be more likely to buy from you. Building your list, whether it is an email list or whether it is a list of mobile numbers or it's a list of names and, you know, through an app. If you've got an app and you're, you're storing contact information so you can send push notifications through an app or whether you've got your website and you're sending email broadcasts, we've now got browser push uh, notifications. So you can actually, like when people are on their browser, we can send them push notifications. Push Crew is a great example of that and there's a lot of companies that are using that right now to be able to get your alerts and your messages out there. But you need to do it in a way that is ethical. You need to do it in a way that's sustainable. There's a balance. You want to get your message out there and you want to market to people, but you don't want to piss people off by just constantly bombarding them with shit. So you need to make sure that there's a balance, that you give people the right amount of sales and marketing and the right amount of nurturing and engagement. Does that make sense? So I would, I'm, this is only a short one today. I'm at a training for the next two days, so I wanted to do this because obviously it's Friday, it's also uh, midday, and I did promise that I would do this. And I wanted to talk about this because we're talking about marketing today. Uh, and one of the things that we are talking about is ways to get your message out there, ways to get your marketing out there. Um, I've actually just agreed that I'm going to be flying out. This is Elliot, by the way. Elliot Kay is an amazing guy. He's one of the uh, facilitators at Pony Express, which is the uh, event that I'm at at the moment with Anik, talking about speaking and growing your audience. Um, and so one of the things I'm going to be doing next month is going out to America. Um, I'm looking uh, to do some training for a weekend with a guy called Jason Harun, phenomenal guy. He, at the moment, manages about $8 million a month in uh, Facebook advertising uh, spend. Uh, he does all the Facebook ads for Mike Dillard, Frank Kern. And so I'm going to go to his house and spend a weekend with him. And that's going to happen next month. 
So you can be sure that I am going to have some amazing information to share with you about this. But right now, what you need to do is you need to find the message that works for you. You need to find what marketing channel works for you and you need to test that you need to get conversions and then you need to improve and tweak that because like one of the things that Jason said and this is why I really admire him is there are so many people that, that are doing his training and then that are calling themselves Facebook experts and that are delivering his material as their own they're not Facebook experts they don't understand things the way that he understands things they're just palming it off as if they are you know, there's a lot of people that can install a WordPress theme and a WordPress plugin and they call themselves WordPress developers, but they're not developers at all. <coughs> they can just install they can <coughs> excuse me, they can just install a theme and a plugin. So you really need to understand and you listen need to, to know. This man. He knows his stuff, all right? Listen, listen, listen to this man. I mean, yeah. Elliot knows his stuff as well, right, to be fair. And we, we actually teach a lot of the same stuff. We do, we're both qualified from Derry, um, CCMs. <clears throat> and so, like, one of the things I've started doing recently, and this, I'm going to leave you with this because this is really important. When people come to me and say, I need a website, like, the first thing that people normally come to me and say is, oh, should I do SEO or should I do Facebook ads or what should I do in terms of marketing? And they'll come to me with the promote, like they want to promote themselves. <clears throat> and so then I'll turn around and say, well, what's your website? And they'll show me their website and I'll say, do you know what? You're not even ready to promote yet. You're not even ready to show this to people. You first need to take a step back and work out the conversion process. You need to have call to actions. You need to have clear and compelling headlines. You need to have a customer journey. You need to have processes in place that will nurture people before you promote to them. A client that I was on the phone to spent two hours with her last night rebuilding her whole process and working with her. That's exactly where she is. She speaks on stage. She's a phenomenal person. She's got a great product, great message, great following already. But her website, it's, it's really struggling and she's not getting any online sales. It's why she's hired me to come into a business to work with her because she's just not getting the results. And it's obvious when I look at her website and I'm looking at it, she's promoting and promoting and promoting. And there's some areas she's not promoting because there's some areas that she's ashamed and embarrassed of. But the reality of it is, is she's brought all these people in to work with her. She's doing all the promoting and she's saying, what promotion should I do? But she's not ready to promote yet. Okay, so you have to make sure that you've built the right system before you promote it. And so it's really, really important you understand. And the reason that I love what, um, what Elliot does and what Derry teaches is I actually don't like, when people come to me and say I want to promote, I'll say I want to see a website. Now, there's actually a step before that. When people say they need a website, or when I look at people and I say they need a website, to go above that, a level up, I want to look at the business. Because here's the reality, and some people might not like this, but you, kind of, you need to hear it. Some people don't have a viable business. Some people have a real big passion. Some people have a real desire because they want to have a business. And I applaud that and I admire that. But the reality is that a lot of people just don't have a sustainable business. And what I don't want to see you do is push money into advertising something that's just not going to convert, something that people are just not going to buy. There is no point. I can build your website. It's easy to build your website. It's not building a website that's the challenge. It's making sure that you're selling the right amount of value to the people that need it. And some people just haven't packaged that value. They don't have that value. They're marketing that value to the wrong people. So you need to get clear on a lot of things before you focus on the marketing. Okay, the marketing is kind of like the end result. You need to make sure that your website converts before you market. You need to make sure you've got your target audience before you build your website. You need to make sure you've got a viable business model before you go searching for the people that you're going to sell the products to, that you're going to market to. There's a process and you need to make sure that you have that process in place. Have an amazing weekend. I'm going to be um, talking to you next week specifically around my book. What I'm going to start doing with these, I've done sort of 10 episodes now. I'm going to actually start as of Monday. I'm going to start going through the chapters of my book. So next week, I'm going to dedicate the entire week next week to strategy. So if there's anything you need to know about strategic places, what you are doing, why you are doing it, what is your exit strategy, uh, who is your customer avatar, all of the things to understand the starting points of your business before we even look at the website, the promotion, all of that, I'm going to go through for the next 10 weeks. Okay, for the next 10 weeks, we are going to do week one strategy. I'm going to cover that next week. We're going to start on Monday. We're going to do five sessions. We're going to go through that process with you. So if there's anything you want to know about strategy and online systems, make sure you tune in. Send me a message. Communicate underneath. Let me know, and I'll make sure I bring that up. Otherwise, have an amazing weekend, whatever it is that you're doing, um, and I will speak to you again on Monday. Take care, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye-bye.